Hello everyone and welcome to SUNUP. I'm Lyndall Stout. Oklahoma wheat producers will soon have a new variety to consider. To learn more about the latest release from OSU's wheat improvement team, let's head to the greenhouse to talk with Dr. Brett Carver. I'm used to the experimental number, which is OK, 18510, but we're going to be calling it now high cotton to give a sort of a positive ring to it. Sure, that's kind of a, an old saying, right? That yeah. just means things are going pretty well. Right? Things are going well, and that's what we hope producers will be saying this spring. You know, at harvest, it, it, we've had a challenging year, but still, let's hope we have a good harvest, and whatever that variety may be, uh, let's hope it's good. And if it just happens to be high cotton, all the better. We'll take it. That's right. I love that Oklahoma optimism. So obviously there's probably a number of attributes that led to this one being selected. Let's talk first about the ancestry. Yes, this, this is where I think high cotton stands apart from say the double stops and uh, anything with a lot of jagger lineage. There just isn't uh, any jagger that's, that's there to speak of. What is there are lines from cement, the biggest breeding program in the, in the world. Okay, and we, we picked one up in the country of Turkey uh, and used that as a direct parent, which is very unusual. Then we have, if you go to three breeding cycles back, which it goes back a little ways, but still, it's within the modern time, we see this plethora of pioneer germplasm, 2174, 2163, 2180, uh, and others that, that may not be familiar. And, and so there's a definite pioneer lineage and backbone to this variety. And I think you might be able to pick that out. Let's talk about the yield potential and kind of the performance out in the field. That's always important. Yes, and so the experimental number is 18510. I've been watching this variety since 2018. It really caught my eye the first year we had it in yield trials. And it's caught my eye ever since because it continues to rank either first or second in our breeding trials. From 2018, that's five years of that. One year it, it went down to six, but that's out of 40, so it's still pretty good. It's, it's really pushing, I think, the envelope for yield in our breeding program and, and a lot of others because we've also tested it in the Southern Regional Performance Nursery. That is an ARS nursery with other great varieties from other great institutions. It finished tied for first in 2021, which is a really tough year, a lot of disease, and we had freeze. I'm really excited about that. I remember that freeze. High Cotton actually spent a little bit of time in this nursery more than 10 years ago, right? It sure did. This is where everything starts. And what I call our maternity ward is where we make the crosses and create the new progeny. So yes, over 10 years ago, right here. So we're talking about the attributes of High Cotton. Let's talk uh, disease resistance. Yes. And so, you know, we want high yield potential, of course, but we also want to be able to protect that yield. And that's what high cotton does provide it. I think it comes with a pretty good insurance policy, a genetic insurance policy of leaf rust resistance, stripe rust resistance, and resistance to many other common diseases in Oklahoma. The one that it doesn't hold a fair level of resistance to that we don't have a lot of is powdery mildew. So I would caution producers, if you have a really lush canopy, watch the mildew. And it's also dual purpose, which is, of course, very important for those who also have cattle operations. Right. So, yeah, I keep talking about the yield. And you, we want to grow it where the yield is. We're going to reach that yield ceiling. OK, if you want to go for the ceiling, go for the grazing. And you can also tolerate that kind of treatment. We, I have looked at it personally uh, many years under conditions of simulated grazing, so I can kind of control how much forage is removed and how it responds to the removal of that canopy. I think it's right up there with OK Corral. And I know OK Corral has been very popular for yes. several years, right? Yes. Um, any downside to high cotton? Well, the, the one I would have mentioned is powdery mildew. Also, uh, low pH, it has some tolerance to that condition. It could probably go down to about five. I wouldn't push it below five. We don't have that certain genetics that's in uh, varieties like double stop. We don't have that gene that's present that allows it to really go down to the mid pores. It's not like that. So it's moderately tolerant. And then seed availability later this year for high cotton. Will there be some around? We're counting on a pretty good harvest. If we get that harvest like we're counting on, yes, uh, 3,000, 4,000 bushels of foundation seed should be available. 
Well, great. Well, thanks for telling us about the new variety, Brett. Congratulations to you and your team. I know it's a, a labor of love and many, many years to get to this point. Thank you so much. We enjoy doing it. Great. And for more information on high cotton as well as OSU's wheat breeding program, just go to sunup.okstate.edu.